to see love to see who you guys are for this next round. See Doug in there. And you, you guys go ahead and switch your little, um, there's a little blue or your little pull down menu where it says hosts and panelists, or you can say um, for everybody to be able to see your posts if you, if you have comments or questions or anything like that. Santa Cruz. Hey, Emma, that was my old stomping grounds. I loved living in Santa Cruz, one of my favorite places on the planet. Got Rhode Island in the house, Columbus, Ohio. Cool. This is great. Cool, cool, cool. Everybody's just slowly trickling in. I got one attendee with a hand raised. I don't, I don't know. What, what do I do there? It says chat. Okay. A lot of empty fields in this. From the what does the, that mean? It's the last name. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think they just put in their first name. Empty. <laughs> it's a whole family, apparently, uh -huh. of <laughs> empty fields. <laughs> All right, you guys are going to see a um, Q and A button uh, somewhere on your screen. Mine's it happens to be in the lower right, but it, it kind of moves around depending on what system you're using and stuff. So. Uh, but if you have a question, go ahead and, and throw it in there anytime. We are getting ready to get started on another round of Children's Book Pro. I can tell you guys, you're in for a treat. That's it right. was awesome. Doing the last round was so amazing for us. I mean, we've been planning this class for literally not kidding years mm -hmm. years and we would build it and we would get ready to record it and we would scrap it because we're like no it's not where it could be it could be better and 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 you know it's got this problem and this problem so we you know we'd really work it over and then we'd start again and same thing and it's just like finally we're like okay we've got the perfect curriculum and we tested it last you know we've been doing these online classes for a long very long time and we know from teaching in the classroom too that it takes it can take up to a year or two to get a class really dialed in this class is dialed in i mean it is i couldn't believe how smoothly it it ran actually cuz we were thinking okay this is the first time we'll run it we'll we'll make our changes mm -hmm we didn't have to make any changes. We we're going to add a couple of little things here and there that we were planning on anyway, but we didn't have to make any changes. So yeah. very excited about that. Really, really happy with how, how it's turned out. And, um, you know, the feedback we we've gotten from our first round of students has been pretty uh, positive too, like better than, than, than we expected. So we're really happy that, um, you know, it's ranged from, like I, you know, I finally feel like I've gotten what I needed, you know, that that's been missing from from what I'm, you know, from this goal of mine to to learn how to do children's books. I finally have it all here. Too, there's even been. I remember one guy was like, "Well, now I know I don't need to do children's books." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. That's true. He he uh, he, you know, and 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 to his credit too, he's like. I'm learning so much about illustration and about how to make my, you know, my illustrations better and how to think more uh, along the lines of storytelling and things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, it was very clarifying, clarifying, I think, for everybody who, who, who took it, because we, you know, half of it is how do you make children's books, but the other half is how do you how do you exist in the children's book ecosystem with the art that you're creating? And, you know, how do you get on the radar of editors and art directors and things like that so that you can actually go and, and, and make a book and become a published uh, illustrator. So it's um, yeah, I think it was, I think it's been good. It's been really good. It's, it's definitely the thing that I wish I had had, 10 years ago when I embarked upon my like children's book illustration career. I remember doing that first one and I was just like, like I had to teach myself. I had to go through and look at all these children's books and 
Yeah. Like, just oh, guess. Is that how they do it? Is this, am I doing it right? You know, is this how <laughs> I talk to a, an art director? Is this, you know, who's in charge and, and, you know, figuring out the whole pipeline of what's uh, you know, what happens first and, and, and what should I work on while I'm waiting for other things. And, you know, three of us have, have ironed that all out um, in our careers and, and we're just passing that, passing that on to you. Well, I, I hate to say it. I'd like to say that I had it ironed out in my, in my career, but after we built the class, I learned so much from building this class the way that we did that now I feel like I kind of need to go back and do all my books again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which would be awesome. I would love to go back and do them again. <laughs> I know that was um, a thing too. It's like uh, hearing your lectures, Lee, going through and remaking uh, old lectures that I'd done before and improving upon them and making new lectures. I'm just like, Oh, I, I don't want to show examples from some of my books because they're not good examples. Um, I'm so much better now. And, and I wish, I wish I could apply this knowledge to past projects, but it's all forward momentum and future books yeah. are going to be even better because of that's this. the weird part about this career is, is it's sort of a snapshot in time about what you know, how, you, how well you paint, how well you can tell stories and you put out a book and you think like, oh, that's when I, like once I do a published book, that's when I'm a pro and everything's clicking. And then you realize later that like, you didn't know this thing and this thing and this thing and you know how to paint better. Uh, you know, it's sort of a snapshot in time about who you were at a certain moment. And it's, it's really interesting to kind of think of it like that and go back and look at it. It's, it's just an archive sort of, of, of where you were. But, it, but everybody can see it. It's sort of embarrassing in that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we got a few, few questions coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in uh, to those. The first one Doug was asking, just about technics and technical stuff. Um, the last week, week 10 falls on Thanksgiving. Yeah, any holiday or weird date, we'll just move to the next week. So don't worry about that. We'll, we'll hit the, I mean, there's always a chance. Or we might move it earlier in that week depending on yeah we'll, we'll we'll take care of it though we'll, de it's, we'll definitely not ask you guys to uh, eat real quick with your family and then jump on a zoom uh you know if it's thanksgiving um doug empty field is also uh, <laughs> oh did you already take care of those questions yeah you just okay. asking where where this was posted oh this gotcha particular web, gotcha uh, webinar. um Marisol is asking, does everybody get feedback in the assignments? That's a great question. And we want to definitely want to clear that up. Um, it's not like a traditional class. There's no way we could do this like a class for the price and for the number of people that are involved. The weekly Zoom sessions are mainly for you to get feedback on if you didn't understand part of the question or like you ran into a specific kind of problem. We do go through a few of the uh, homeworks that you guys turn in. We'll show you some examples and show you where you can improve, but it's not a, like an individual class where we're going through each person's uh, work every single week. Um, we do hope to have a version of that probably by January um, that can be added on to this class. That's a, like a little bit of a, more of a one-on-one -on -one type thing where you get individual feedback and stuff like that. We're working on that. Um, so there's different versions of this class that we've kind of been talking about. We wanted to just get that all the information out there first. Some people are just going to want to watch the videos and they're off to the races. Um, other people are going to want more uh, handholding along the way. And I can understand that for sure. Uh, and we're going to try to offer that as, as we go. So this is sort of a hybrid version of it. And it tended to work pretty well um, last time. I'll go ahead and ask a couple of questions that we got from last time because I remember them very specifically. Some people are total beginners. And you guys are freaking out thinking, oh my gosh, I might not be ready for this class. And the opposite side of that is some people will say, hey, I'm, I'm sort of pro already. Maybe I'm too advanced for this class. So it's those two questions we get a lot. Am I too advanced or am I too much of a beginner? And I can tell you that for the beginners, it works absolutely perfectly. You don't have to get a published book out of this. You're really learning to go through the steps. That we've that we've built and it is truly a here's step one here's step two and it's really great habits for you to get into right from the beginning there's no early enough time to get this information i think because mm -hmm. we're not trying to tell you how to draw well it's not like you have to draw a city in perspective or you're not ready for this it's it's really information it's a system it's a thinking it's a process 
And so the, the quicker you can get on board with that, the better, because you're going to save a mountain of time, so much time right. later in your career. And then for the pro, this is where it'll hit you. It's, it'll clean up all your bad habits and it'll reinforce your ability to tell a story well. So the beginners are probably going to have to go through the class one time, make a bunch of mistakes, probably watch it again, make less mistakes and get better as you go. Where the pros have an advantage there is you can probably go through it once and use all the information really quickly because you're already sort of familiar with how it works. Um, but it does hit both groups um, perfectly fine. Yeah, that's really good. I wanna say too, like um, um, a lot of this is, is shifting your mindset into how do I go from just making pretty pictures? This is talking to the beginners or the intermediates. How do I go from just making pretty pictures to telling stories with my art? Like, how do I make an image that tells a story? And that is something that that we work, you know, these, these lectures work on and, and get you to understand that. And that's, you know, if you're not good at perspective, if you're not good at character design, if you're not quite there yet, you know, in, in color and, and, and uh, composition and things like that. Um, all of that can be learned. All of that can easily, easily be learned with, with just the right, you know, uh, instruction. What's, what takes time and understanding and, and, and learning, like real focused learning is how do I become a storyteller? How do I tell a story with my art? And so that's what we're, we're trying to, to do here is, is focus more on here, is, here are the, the tools needed to be a children's book illustrator, storyteller, right? Yeah, that's good. Um, this is a good one. We got this, this was the second most uh, questions we had last time. <laughs> Can you talk about choosing our manuscripts? I have a few that I'm working on for dummies. I kind of want to work on an existing story for my portfolio. On the other hand, it would be a great time to strengthen my dummy um, sample illustrations. Um, any thoughts from Emma? So it's, so apparently all, all the questions are coming from Doug Emptyfield. <laughs> different people. Okay, so I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, there must be a glitch in the, in the webinar software. <laughs> um, this is a, it's a great question. Um, you're free to work on your own manuscript. The reason that we discourage that is because if your manuscript isn't ready to go to town with all these techniques and stuff we're doing, then you're going to spend time revising uh, your manuscript or the it just might not be ready enough to work it through the, the stuff that we're going to ask you to do. And so we actually have, we hired uh, two writers to write three stories and they wrote it just exclusively from our class. They are not meant to be award-winning children's books. All they are is a perfect sample manuscript. And they're, they're just folk tales. Um, last time we got <laughs> some, that was one of the interesting things is like, people were like, hey, I don't like the story. It's, I don't like the ending. I don't like, it doesn't matter. Like you're, you guys, it, when you get a story, you should be able to illustrate it perfectly. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the exact perfect story for you, nor are we requiring that to be it. We're looking for you to learn how to illustrate a story. And then after you go through those techniques and, and, and trials and errors, then you illustrate your perfect one, if that makes sense. So we yeah. do supply you a three. You're fine to use one on your own as well. It's up to you. No, that was the thing we, we kind of uh, were, you know, internally, Will, Lee and I were having discussions um, because um, if we were handed these, you know, these manuscripts are, are pretty, pretty, um, I, want, I don't want to say simple, but, but basic because they're, um, you know, they're, they're tried and true fairy tales that everybody's familiar with. And the reason for that is we, we, when you create art for them, we want it to be iconic and recognizable so that when an art director sees it or an editor sees it, they immediately know what they're looking at and they're seeing your style on top of that. So like one of them's Jack and the Beanstalk, right? Um, everyone's familiar with that, but you're going to give it your own voice. You're going to give it your own, own style to it. Uh, that, that should be able to show how, what separates you from everyone else that's done it. And the thing, um, the thing we were talking about is, is you could, you know, when you, when you're working with a professional and we've done this before is you could be handed something that 
you maybe you're not too passionate about, but you look for a way to find something to grab onto in it and, and make something out of it. And I think that's the difference between like being a pro and just being a hobbyist. Um, you know, if you're a hobbyist, you're doing this in your free time. It's supposed to, you know, really just be like your, your break from, from everything else, your, your time to relax. And so you're going to want to work on something that's just fun and maybe doesn't push you too hard, but it, but it's fun. Um, but we're, you know, this isn't children's book hobbyists. This is children's book pro. And so our, our whole mode in here is to take people who are really interested in having this be, um, you know, something that's, that's beyond the hobby thing and more about how do I make work that I can then, um, you know, get a job from, uh, you know, start getting illustration work, start getting the intention of agents and editors and illustrators. And that means we're, you know, some of these things might put you a little bit out of your comfort zone, might push you a little bit harder. Um, and, uh, and so just know that going into it, that, that, you know, this is going to be a thing for you to, 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 uh, stretch yourself and, and kind of level up. Okay. Yep. And, and we did that. We did the same thing. I mean, when we were in, when we were building the class, it came time for us to do some illustrations and we thought, you know what, it'd be fun if we take the same piece of text and all three of us illustrate it. Um, and we just picked from the stories that we were, that we had and, we, we built a dummy and we didn't even think twice about the writing. It was just like, here's a manuscript. Okay, go to town. And you can, through, through using the techniques that we're going to teach you in the, in the class, you're going to be able to do the same thing. It does not have to be, again, a Caldecott winning story. It doesn't have to be the most original writing that you've ever seen. And nobody's ever seen a story like it. Although that's always great. You know, we want you guys to illustrate unique stories. But as a pro, you could be handed anything and illustrate it well. And so it's a kind of a mental hurdle to get over, to realize that, oh my gosh, I don't need the perfect information or the perfect assignment. I can make any assignment into my perfect assignment, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, again, Doug Emptyfield is asking, <laughs> <laughs> will you be discussing the business as well or the technical aspects? I mean, we go all, all through the business stuff too. We show you how we go through production as well. How do you send your files? What's the best method? Uh, what uh, color profile is best? How does the proofing system work? All of it we go through uh, in detail. Mm -hmm. I even talk about how to use social media um, as a as an illustrator. Um, you know, I have uh, ten plus years in in using social media that way, and I've made mistakes and I've made a lot of uh, advances advancements in. Uh, my social media usage. And so there's an hour long, is it an hour long? It was a long lecture on how do you become, uh, how do you use it to your advantage so that it's not using you? And that's just another aspect on the, uh, the I guess the marketing side of, of, of it as well. So yeah, it's, it's a, it, I, like I said, or, you know, we were talking about earlier, it's, this is comprehensive. Um, I don't know. It's the real deal. I mean, we, <laughs> when we it, just the purchase price of this class, this is going to sound super salesy, but I'm not kidding when I say this, the price, there's two lectures in the class. One Jake's lectures on covers and my lectures on when to use a spot, a full single page mm -hmm. or a full spread. Those two lectures are worth the price of admission on this thing. I mean, these are, when I was putting to get together that lecture of when to use a spot illustration, a single page or a spread, I thought to myself, okay, that's going to be like a three minute lecture because it's just a spot, a page and a spread. And when I yeah, got into the deal. content, it's, it's like an hour and a half total breakdown of how to move time within a story, how to pace, how to move your pacing forward. We go deep into every aspect of this, including the business side of it and the social media side of it. Um, but if we break it down into every little step and then deep dive into that little step. So when you're making a book cover, you're going to know exactly the kind of book cover to make for the kind of story that you have. Right. And that was another lecture. Where I'm like, oh, this will be easy. Uh, 10 minutes. I'll just say, put the words here, put your character here, <laughs> bing, bang, boom, it's done. <laughs> and uh, it ended up being way more, you know, I did a kind of a survey of popular children's books um, that are, you know, that are all selling well, or at least visually really appealing. 
um, and and showed essentially what the different uh, categories are of book cover and like Lee said, why you would want to use this particular version of a book cover versus this one to 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 sell your story. All right, that's exactly right. All right, Sharon's asking, uh, thanks for the Zoom meeting. I'm very interested in this course, but what if I need more time between the meetings? Do I join the Zoom meeting and still complete my work on my own time? Or do we get personal meetings to discuss our work? How is my work being valued? Um, uh, you're exactly right in some of those assumptions in there. You take all the time you want. When you buy the class, the class is yours. You can watch it. You can you could just watch the Zoom sessions and not do any work if you wanted to. The Zoom sessions happen on a weekly basis. They're not staggered out based on the work that you guys are doing. We just set up a weekly meeting. You can join if you want to, or you don't have to join if you, if you don't want to. Um, the individual work, I mean, it is a online course though. Um, so in, in other words, you're not being taught and critiqued. Every individual person is not being critiqued each time. Yeah, it's like a self-paced um, uh, course. Yeah we, yeah, we could never do it for this price um, with, with that kind of feedback. Now, like I said earlier, if uh, Sharon, if you weren't in the room yet or maybe didn't hear it, uh, we are working on that, um, having a guided version and or a mentored version. Um, mm -hmm. And we're kind of still still debating on how that's going to work and what what would serve people the best. And we'll definitely let you guys know. Um, and when that releases, obviously you guys are not going to pay full price for that. Your, you know, your cost of the class will come off of whatever that is if you want to get that kind of feedback later. But this yeah. is just a, a video led course. And then we're here to answer any specific questions you might have weekly, but it's not a uh, if that makes sense. I know it's kind of, that's kind of confusing because there's not a ton of classes that do this kind of hybrid version. Mm -hmm. I think the Let other thing know. too, which um, is maybe an overlooked but essential part of this is the Discord group. Because uh, what we're doing is putting you together with uh, a cohort who are you know, within a few degrees on the same level as you. Um, and, and essentially you like that, you'll have access to that discord group to these people as long as, as you know, it exists. Right. And like, we're not taking down yeah. the discord. We're, we're, um, we're wanting you to make friends, to network within there. We're wanting people to share their wins, to share things that they've learned. And this last group that we did over, over the summer, uh, it's still a thriving group. They're still talking and sharing things with each other. They're they're posting artwork, um, um, and it's just been a, 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 a like a real extra bonus to this whole thing that I I hope hope you're not overlooking because uh, one of the hardest parts in in learning something is finding a group of people to learn with and to you know sort of peers to like. Uh, for me, it's always, I like the, the competitive aspect of it. Like somebody does something really cool. And now I know the bar that I need to reach and try to, you know, do something like that. And, uh, and you could see some other people who are learning things that, um, that, that you need to learn as well. And you could see how they solve that problem. So it's a, it's another good, I, you know, just aspect of this whole thing that, that, that we liked initially it was just so, like let's have a discord so that people can talk to each other and we can kind of share some information and then it turned into this really nice online community thing so oh, it's amazing how much people are using that in the other one it's 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 incredible actually um will terry is here i'm trying to figure out how to let him in to our is he in one of the panelists he no he's showing up as an attendee but i don't have the option maybe you have the option to tell him to raise him. his hand and then we'll he's know. He's at the bottom. Just go, go into the attendees. He's oh. at the bottom of the list. Where? There he is. No, he just moved. It just Oh, there it is. He's at the top now. There he is. <laughs> Will Terry asks, what if I don't have time to take the class? You always have time to take the class because you, once you buy the class, the class is always yours. You better you just... have time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the beauty of this. I mean, I think, I think this class is a long-term thing. Like some people are like, Oh my gosh, I'm behind on the 10 weeks. I, I didn't get my character assignment done quick enough. This is a long-term plan. We do not expect you to get you guys to have polished work after 10 weeks for every assignment. There's no way you could keep up. And so that we, I guess that's a good question, right? At the, at the get-go is how much workload is it? It's a lot, but you can do it over time. And again, we don't expect finished work every week. 
Um, you build it, go as you as you can, do the best you can, and um, and then you will be revisiting this information over and over. I guarantee it. I remember too, like um, uh, there was uh, a couple of people who were waiting to do the assignments until after the um, the Q and A, the weekly Q and A. So the, some people were were doing the assignments, and we were looking at them, and we could kind of see you know, based on 10 different assignments, like, oh, here's a thing we, we should probably address that kind of applies to what problems people are having. And other people were like, well, I want to wait and see what the problems that they're addressing are before I sit down and do mine. Um, and so right. it's just really like it is, it's a learn at your own pace, do it your own style type of, uh, type of course. We're presenting the information and, uh, and then, you know, we're also talking about, you know, things to watch out for things to uh, you know, that like, I guess um, mistakes and mess ups that we've done and other people have done that you could hopefully avoid. So you don't have to waste time doing that as well. So here's a question. What would be the best venue to ask ongoing questions? Discord. Uh, absolutely. You can ask questions in discord. Um, obviously questions in the, uh, in the weekly Q and a session, but after that, after those the ten weeks uh, that the Q and A sections happen, it'll just be uh, um, the Discord is where where all the action will be. Um, next question: Hey Jake, I made it. Does most of the publishing discussion uh, cover finding and using publishers or self publishing? So, Will, you wanna you wanna take that one? Um. It's mostly finding and using publishers. We're, we're not spending most of our time talking about self-publishing. I will say, though, self-publishing does factor into to some of the business side of things, for sure. But More and more. You know, that's self-publishing is such a, uh, such a big task for you as a creator because you're your creator, you're also publisher, editor, art director, um, your shipping person, you're the uh, marketing team for this project. Um, and, and really that's pro possibly, and we've talked about this, of, of doing a self-publishing pro course where we train you from start to finish on, on how to do so. The three of us have done Kickstarters. We're no strangers to, to self-publishing and We've made the mistakes and we've also, uh, I don't know. Uh, Reap the benefits. Yeah, I mean, between <laughs> our three Kickstarters that we've done over the years, we're over half a million earned, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's benefits there, but it is a lot of work. And every time I'd finish a Kickstarter, I swear I'll never do another one again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, me and Will, and, and you're getting ready. To, you're getting ready to do another one, right? Yeah, I've got one planned for March. So yeah. all, th all three of us got one coming coming up. So we're yeah. we're all in that world as well. Yeah. I will say that self publishing. We're kind of viewing self publishing. And we haven't really talked too much about this, but in two separate avenues. There's the self publishing of hey, I'm the artist and I want to create my own project. That's sort of what us three are doing. And then there's the self publishing that hey, this author over here asked me to do something, and that's what we don't recommend. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of two different little things. If you're the content, if you're in control of the content and all the stuff and how it's going to launch, we're all for it. Kind of and it's just a uh, word of caution if you're going to be illustrating books for self-published authors, because mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes with that. Just a word of warning. Um, so that's already been answered. Um, how many peeps are in the class? Uh, our Zoom sessions, will we get to speak and interact as a class or will they all be webinars? Thank you. Um, this is from Emma. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are gonna be in this class. It's a much smaller group than the last time, but even with as many people as we had last time, uh, a couple hundred people, we got to answer everybody's questions. It was fantastic. I mean, we, and we went longer on the Zoom sessions if we had to. Um, you'll definitely get to ask a question uh, in the zoom sessions, if you have one, mm -hmm. I can say that for sure. Yeah. Yep. And, and it, what's, what's really cool is with that group of, of people, this cohort that you're working with, um, 
and because we've done it before, we already can anticipate the questions you're going to have, <laughs> but also, yeah. um, uh, you'd be surprised at how many people have the same question. So you might be thinking, Oh, I, I'm wondering what this is. And it'll be answered, you know, right out of the gate by, by, uh, you're know, asked by someone, by someone else. So it'll definitely, definitely be, be okay for you there. This next question is a good one. I'll answer this one. Um, uh, love me in discord. Are we allowed to ask why the class was delayed? Sure. You guys, I want to say this. You guys can ask any question you want. Don't feel free to, to hide one or pull your punches. Go ahead. If you don't like something to let us know and we'll fix the stuff. I mean, we're, we want to make this class as good as we possibly can. It's a totally valid question to, to ask. Um, the one thing you guys get with us three is you're not getting theory. You're getting three working artists. <laughs> We're all right in it and we're still right in it. And that's what I think where we bring value to, to the table and, and experience to the table. Um, all three of us, after, the, after we ran the last class, we said, hey, that was so much fun, let's run it again. We opened up the, the cart, we sold some, and then we're like, oh my gosh, wait, we all have all these projects going and we're building out the whole foundation for svslearn.com. So, there's, so we're trying to finish up that foundation. So we all of a sudden we looked at our calendar, we're like, there is no possible way we're going to be able to run this class and be effective in it. And so we thought we would move it back a little bit. Part yeah. of it is our, the right hand doesn't know exactly what the left hand is doing sometimes at SVS. So we had a, <laughs> a we, our team was anxious to get us going again, but we hadn't really communicated with them what our schedules were like. And so there was some yeah. of that going on where we kind of said, hold, let's, let's hold off here for a second and let us catch our breath and, and do this, do this right. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Another question. Sorry if this was answered at the beginning, got here late. It's okay. We'll take it anyway. Will you cover legal status? And if so, will it be only for the U S or worldwide? I'm thinking about taxes and administrative stuff. Legal status. Are we, I assume that's, um, I'm, I'm, I we might need a little bit more clarification for that. Well, as far as like setting up, I'm, I'm assuming setting up entities here in the U S you can file taxes as a sole proprietor. You can file as an LLC, you could file as a corporation. Um, and so you have a lot of different options. Um, you know, we actually don't get into how to run an illustration business. Um, that's, I have a 12 hour course on that at SVS. It's 12 yeah. hours of video content with downloads and stuff. Um, so go check it out. It's a three part series um, called making money in illustration. And I do go over all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that's, I, you know, like Lee said, that's a 12 hour undertaking um, to really cover. Like I'm, I'm setting up shop and putting out my shingle. I'm going to be an illustrator and, when it came down to it, it's like, let's focus on how the business side applies just to children's books. And so, uh, and so that's where this class exists. But if you're wanting to go on and, you know, I'm, I need to do illustration assignments. I want to do like two books a year and I want to know how to, do I do an LLC or do I do a sole proprietorship and all, all those kinds of things. It's covered in Lee's, um, Lee's class over at SVS Learn. Okay, question. Will you do another class again later? I'm not quite ready. If you decide to stop doing the live 10-week version, will you make a version available that's just the videos? What's the plan there, guys? We talked about this a couple weeks ago. No, we did? <laughs> well, we don't really have a plan right now for that. But <laughs> our, our plan is to next get some kind of interactive or instructor-led version of this class built. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what's up next. And But we're still going to run uh, one like this again too for people who don't want that because obviously it's going to be two different price points uh if you have a one-on-one -on -one teacher that's going to be more expensive um so i'm not sure it's a good we'll put a pin in that one and get you more information as we mm -hmm. figure that out i will say when we when we first started it we we're like we should run it like uh like a university you know let's run it every semester so four four times a year a, a summer a spring a winter and a fall right and let's do it that and then we just realized like that is way too much <laughs> we can't handle we can't handle it doing right. that much so we'll be uh it won't be none and it won't be four <laughs> <laughs> 
multiple choice there. Um, yeah. Are these Q&A sessions going to be recorded and able to watch if we can't watch it live? If so, where will they be found? Yes, they will definitely be recorded each week and they will be uh, a, a put in the course shell. When you guys actually get into the course shell, you'll see it like week one, week two, week three, week four, all that. Uh, and just, it'll just be up right when we finish one of the classes or one of the Q and A's, we'll upload it to there and you'll be able to watch it anytime. Mm -hmm. All right. In the first class, was there a common pitfall or hiccup you saw students make the first week? That's a good question. That's a great question. Is the first week, the week they, they, pick their manuscript, right? I need to go back and, uh, and look again. We kind of have you guys looking at children's books. We're, we do a lot of interviewing the first week of you and try to, but basically you're interviewing yourself. What kind of books do you like? Mm -hmm. what kind of stories have, did you look at as a kid? I mean, we go through this whole process of even like, why do you like children's books? And and really starting to answer some of those questions. So not, nothing happened I want, really I want to say, one. Yeah, I want to say though, an early hiccup was... Um, choosing the manuscript and then um, people getting, um, I guess, ahead of themselves on fleshing out the, the, the story for that man or the, the images for that manuscript. And, and one of the first things we want you to do is just read it, sit with it. And uh, there's a thing called pagination that we get into and just um, imagine you're flipping through that manuscript page by page and uh, um, we've got 10 weeks to do this thing. Um, you know, hopefully by the end of it, you have a, a full dummy if you're able to like stay on, on that, that, um, you, know, you know, that, that, that track, I guess that time, mm -hmm. time, time track. Um, and, and one of those weeks is just sitting with that manuscript, thinking about it, letting it, you know, letting yourself like ponder it and, and work on it. And uh, I think just the main problem there, like I said, was jumping ahead, jumping the gun and trying to go further faster when, when they weren't ready. And, and when we hadn't explained, you know, certain things of how to do things. So yeah, another, then, I'll tell you, there's a, Oh, go ahead. Will. well, another, another thing that goes along with that, I would say is that some, a lot of people had um, questions on, am I doing it right? Am I, is, <clears throat> not be not a not being able to be decisive and make decisions on their pagination mm -hmm. and and um, i would say this it's i mean i don't think we mentioned this in the class but if we gave that manuscript to three different editors at three different major publishing houses in new york to make three different books there would be different pagination for each one probably mm -hmm. so there's so to get get out of your mind that there's a perfect only one way to do it right right yeah. if you're uh, if you're one of those mindsets where it's like you know am i doing this right is is there a an, a you know one thin straight path that i need to follow just know that everybody has a different artistic voice a different experiences life experiences mm -hmm. that they're bringing to this and that's what makes it beautiful and interesting is to see all the different interpretations and the way to do it. So, you know, I guess the, the thing, one of the things is, is as far as um, storytelling is, does it just feel right to you? Does it feel good? Um, is half of the equation. The other half of the equation is, is it reading well, you know, or do people understand it? But if you, uh, if you're worried too much about one or the other, I, I think it, it can get you into trouble. I'll tell you a hiccup. It didn't happen the first week, but one of the biggest hiccups that we saw in the beginning when we gave the manuscripts, the three options that we we're going to give you guys, is people thinking that the manuscripts that we gave weren't usable as, the, as they're written and that, that you as the student need to massively transform the story. So for example, taking you know, Little Red Riding Hood, very basic story that is perfectly illustratable, just straight up with the text that we give you. And then like a student next week in the discord would say, okay, my little red riding hood takes place in space and the wolf, how did the wolf get there? Oh, she took a rocket ship. And like, I mean, the, the stories got way away from the actual manuscript. And <laughs> so I think some students thought that, that, that they couldn't use the manuscript in its base form and that you had to like push it into this creative, like 
an almost unrecognizable version of the stories. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, you do not have to do that. It was, it was more work. And I was telling people, stop, you're, you're pushing it too far. Now, now you're basically rewriting a new story mm -hmm. at that point, because you brought in so many problems. Now you're not worried about illustration. Now you're worried about how to write the story again, which is what we were trying to try not to have happen. So we did have that happen a few times where we had to sort of rein it in and say, you guys are thinking a little too hard about the manuscripts. Just, just take the story and illustrate it. Um, I just got a question here on uh, YouTube, actually. This comes from Black Mage. I'm not interested in children's books, but I am interested in graphic novels and comics. So would, uh, would this be worth it? Um, and, and I want to say that this class is hyper-focused on like the children's book niche, right? Um, that said, there are um, parallels between what you do in children's books and what you do in any storytelling media. So um, would you, if you want to do graphic novels, would you be able to glean some information on how to storytell, how to do, you know, character designs that relate to people, how to, you know, break into a, a publishing industry? Absolutely, yes. Is this going to give you everything you need to know to like set up shop as a graphic uh, novelist? Probably not. Um, that's should, you know, we've, we've got plans and ideas of doing graphic novel pro in the future. Um, that's going to be a, a monumental undertaking just with the amount of information. So I don't, you know, we just barely finished this one. So <laughs> don't want to think about another class just yet, but um, things are uh, coming. Yeah. That stuff's coming. So short answer is you'll be able to learn some stuff. Long answer, you know, uh, is what I just previously said. Um, let me see here. Someone says on, on YouTube as well, by the way, the bonus courses are excellent and worth the price of the course in and of themselves. Thank you for that. That's right. I, you know, if you haven't uh, seen, there are some bonus course classes that come with this course. And, uh, um, that was cause a lot of times what happens is in this class, we'll be teaching, you know, let's design a character. Um, and so we'll, we'll focus on how to design a character specifically for children's books. But if you're not confident with gesture design, you know, um, with, with some sort of volume uh, drawing and things like that, those are much more fundamental and, and like drawing basics. And so we have access to some of these other courses that you can like pause what you're doing on children's book pro go spend an evening watching that stuff you know, try your hand on it and then come back to Children's Book Pro once you feel like you've, you've gotten that down a little bit better. I do want to share, this is a little side note, um, but, you know, you guys are thinking about taking the class. I think it's important to read um, some of the things that other people from the previous group are saying. I just got a message today on Instagram and it was just nice and I thought I'd share it. Um, it was from a, from a guy who took our class and he was thanking us because he wanted to get into children's books, never really knew how, because this path is so confusing. And he said, after taking our course, this is such a good compliment. He said that he learned more in our children's book pro class than he did in entire four years at SCAD. <laughs> and we've heard that a bunch of times, actually. Over and over. It's pretty yeah. crazy. But it's very specific. What I realized in colleges is the, the, the advice is very general. I mean, they're, they're servicing this giant student body, all these different interests. That's why this class is so good. It's so focused. And uh, it'll, it, like I said earlier, it allows us to dive really deep into all this stuff. And yeah, we heard it over and over from people who are in, currently in school right now or just finished up a degree in, in illustration. You know, they're going to schools that cost $100,000 plus and they're not getting what they need. And apparently they did here. And so it was just such a great, <laughs> this is such a great compliment. It makes us me feel so good that we um, were able well, to and do I've, that. I've, I've, to elaborate on that, there, there's a good reason for that. The, the reason that that happens is, when, when you teach at a school, you typically, in, in art, there really aren't textbooks. You know, the teacher brings their knowledge and they, the teacher brings their experience. And there's, there's actually, um, I don't know if I'd call it an incentive, but maybe an incentive to just kind of wing it when you come to class. You just sort of, as a teacher, I've done this when I taught at university, you just because you can answer any question because you've illustrated children's books, 
you just show up to class and if students have questions, you answer them. And if they don't, the questions that aren't asked, you don't answer them. You know, but this, but but the students feel pretty good because they've got someone who's pretty much an expert in their class. The difference is, is teachers that work at universities don't often organize their material like we had to in order to, to sell this class. If we said, hey, we're just going to show up. And if you guys have questions, we'll answer them. <laughs> no one would <laughs> yeah. want to join this class. But when you but when you go to a university or when you go to an art school, you have to take a certain amount of classes. You've already signed up. And so you you go there and the and the teachers are quite frankly allowed to be lazy. I was lazy when I taught at the university because I knew I could give them a good enough education. But on online when you're when you're creating a class, you've got to you've got to bring an organization. So the three of us sat down and we um, we didn't leave any stones unturned. I mean, we, we went over our previous course and we said, okay, what is this missing? What do we need to flesh out? Yeah. Um, we talked about that before you jumped on that we, how oh, we trashed you? it yeah. a couple of times and yeah. rebuilt it and stuff. When they, when we were first putting together this course, they, you know, we were working with people who build online, um, courses in order to give the best course that we can and know that we're doing the right thing. So we cut, we actually sought outside help in building a course and they wanted us to make our, I can't remember what the recommended length was. It was like, uh, you know, like 15 hours or 18 hours or something total for the entire week one to week 10. And we, we almost cover that much ground in like one class. <laughs> like they, they couldn't believe how much footage we had, but we were like, we have to include all this. You can't not include yeah. this stuff. And so what, what started out is, okay, that'll be a 30 minute lecture, but came a two hour lecture and, and with packed with stuff, not just like randomly talking about stuff to make it long. Cause that's what you have to do in class. Right. Well, it's like when you're at a university, you got to fill the four hours, right. But we're just hitting it as fast as we can. It's just a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah. Well, I don't see any other questions. Um, so I think we're going to call this session good. I just want to thank everybody for uh, showing up. And, uh, and uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate all the questions. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you um, on Children's Book Pro. So yeah, bye guys. See you. All right.